All right, now within the IFRS 15, as I told you, we have another standard which was merged earlier, and that was the construction contract. I told you earlier that within IFRS 15, there are two standards basically. The first one was IS 18, which used to be the revenue recognition, and the IS 11, the construction contracts. Now, these two standards were merged, and the new standard is known as the IFRS 15. So the construction contract is an, again, very important topic within IFRS 15. And the accounting issue related to the construction contract is that these construction contracts are the long-term contracts. And when we say the long-term contracts, that means these contracts are more than one year. Like for example, a company making an Olympic stadium it may take three to four years to build an, build an Olympic stadium. Similarly, a company building a bridge, building a dam. Similarly, building, constructing a football ground. It may take several years, three years, four years, five years, such as the dams take even 10 years. Now, let's assume you're a company who has been given a contract to construct a football ground. And that football ground is going to take five years. Now, th this contract has been given to you by a government. Let's assume we are having a World Cup in, in, in the Qatar in 2022, I guess. So it's, it's, it's a football World Cup over there. Uh, pardon me if I'm wrong with the year, but it is going to be a football World Cup over there. And the construction is already going over there regarding uh, the football grounds. So let's assume you're a company which has been given a contract to construct a football stadium, football ground. And it is going to take, let's assume, five years. And you will be getting a fixed amount of money in terms of the price, in terms of the contract price. Now, when you are going to record this revenue, are you going to record this complete revenue at the start of the contract? So start of the contract, no, you are not going to do that. Are you going to record the revenue at the end of the contract? No, you are not going to do that. Are you going to record the revenue when you receive the payments based on the receipts? No, you are not going to do that. Are you going to straight away, straight away on straight line basis, are you going to record the revenue in the straight line basis? That means eventually, complete revenue divided by five years, no. All the answers are no. You are not going to record the revenue at the start of the contract. You're not going to record the revenue at the end of the contract, even not based on the receipts, even not on the straight line basis that been dividing it over the years. How you're going to do that? The standard says that if you're having a construction contract, which is a long-term contract, then the revenue should be recorded. When, when I say revenue, that eventually means the cost of sales and the profit as well. The revenue should be recorded based on the stage of completion. When you have the long-term contracts, then it is very important that revenue is going to be recorded based on the stage of completion. That means at each year end, you're going to measure the progress of the contract. At each year end, you're going to measure the progress of the contract. How you're going to measure that, there's a certain criteria for that. So at each year end, you're going to measure the progress of the contract. Let's assume the contract is completed 20%. Now 20% of the revenue should be recorded. This figure multiply by 20%. Then again, for example, if the 30% is completed, you're going to record the 30% revenue. So we are not going to record the revenue at the inception of the contract, not on the end of the contract, not based on the receipts, and even not based on the straight line basis. And we are going to record the revenue based on the stage of completion. At each year end, we are going to measure the progress. And based on that progress, we are going to record the figures within the financial statement. So in order to deal with the accounting of the construction contracts, there are four steps 
and this is something very important for the exam both in terms of the objective test case questions as well as the ob uh, ob as well as the final account question because usually we have an adjustment from the IFRS 15 related to construct construction contract within the final accounts so the first step is calculate the profit or loss on the contract now how you can do that it's a simple working you need to compare the contract price with the total cost and you get the profit or loss. If it is a loss, it should be immediately recognized in full. It, if it is a loss, it should be immediately recognized in full. Now, why we are recognizing the loss immediately because it's, a, it's an application of the prudence concept. And when you, are, when you have the uh, profits, income gains, you're not going to record it unless and until you have earned it. And when it comes to the losses, you're going to record the losses immediately. This is the concept of the prudence concept because loss is never unrealized. Loss is always realized. So when you're having a loss, you're going to record that loss immediately. So if there's a profit, then the profit should be recorded based on the stage of completion. So the first step is to see whether on the contract you will be having the profit or the loss. If it's a profit, you're going to record it based on the stage of the completion. If it is a loss, that loss should be immediately recognized. And this is an application of the prudence concept. The second step is to, is to measure the stage of the completion, either through the cost method or the work certified method. We are going to discuss that in a while. There are two methods to measure the progress of the contract. The third step is to calculate the extracts of the statement of the profit or loss. That means the revenue, the cost of sales and the profit and the losses as well. For example, if it is a loss, then the loss is recognized immediately, uh, which you have already calculated in the step number one. The step number four is to calculate the extracts for the statement of financial position, which means either it is going to be a contract asset or going to be a contract liability. Now the first step, I told you the first step is to calculate the profit or loss on the contract. Now this is a simple calculation. You will be having the contract revenue within the question. And sometimes this contract revenue is written as the contract price. So both gives the same meaning, both are the same. If it is a contract revenue, simply it's a revenue. If it's a contract price, it is the same thing. So don't get, get puzzled. Of, of, with the different name. So contract revenue, the contract price is the same thing. Whatever you will be getting from the contract is known as the contract revenue and the contract price. And then we need to deduct the total cost from it. But whenever we have uh, the questions related to the construction contract within the exam, we see that the total cost is given in two stages. The total cost is given in two stages. The first stage is the cost to date. And the second thing is further cost to complete. Now the cost to date is the cost till now and further cost means the further cost, the, uh, the additional cost that they will be having uh, onwards. So when you total cost to date plus the further cost, it gives you the total cost. So when you deduct a cost from the revenue, it gives you the profit or the loss. And remember when you have the profit, it is going to be recorded based on the stage of completion. And when you have the loss, it is going to be recognized immediately. And I told you this is an application of the prudence concept that loss should be immediately recognized. The second step is measuring the progress of the contract, which is the stage of completion, progress of the contract, which is the stage of the completion. And there are two methods to measure the progress. The first one is the cost method, and the second one is the work certified method. Now both makes the complete sense. And remember that examiner is going to mention within the question, either you're going to use the cost method or work certified method. Let's assume if the question is silent, that examiner is not saying anything, which method to use, then simply see which information is available to calculate the state of the completion. This is a co complete common sense thing. If the examiner is mentioning use the cost method, simply use that. If they're mentioning the work certified method, simply use that. 
If they are not mentioning anything and the question is silent regarding that, so see which information is available. Obviously, examiner is going to give the relevant information within the question. It, uh, definitely, it is going to be the case. So working number two is the stage of completion. Now, the first method is the cost method. Cost to date, divide by the total cost. Let's assume the total cost, total cost is 200. And the cost to date is 50. Multiply by 100, then that means the contract is completed by 25%. The cost to date is 50 and the total cost is 200. That means if we compare the cost to date to the total cost, according to the cost figure, the 25% cost has been spent. So that means the 25% contract has been completed. This is the stage of completion thing. The second method is the work certified method. Let's assume the contract price is 200 million. And till now you have performed the work of 100 million. Work certified means the, the value of the work you have performed till now. Like the work we have performed until now, when it is, when it is being valued, it is 400. So the 100 is the value of the work you have performed till now. And we're going to compare it with the uh, total revenue and multiply by 100. That means the contract has been completed by 50%. Now, there can be a question in your mind that, okay, the cost thing can be easily assessed because you will be having all the calculation of the cost and how much you have spent till now in terms of the cost. Now, how you're going to measure the work certified thing, like the work we have performed till now, how you're going to assign the value to that thing. So for the F7 level, you know, uh, it is going to be given in the question, but to understand it, that simply means you're going to call a surveyor, a professional surveyor, and you, you, you're going to show your work to them and then ask them, okay, what do you think in your best estimate? The value of the work we have performed till now, and they're going to give you the figure. So that is the work certified thing. So work certified to date, divide by the total revenue, multiply by 100, it is going to give you the 50% uh, in my example. So these two are the example, and in the exam, there will be different figures over there. So the first step was, to calculate whether there is going to be a profit or the loss on the contract. The second step is to calculate the stage of completion. Now stage of completion can be either from the cost method or from the work certified method. Now we, you are done with the stage of completion. Coming towards the working number three, which is the extract of the statement of profit or loss. And we know in the statement of profit or loss, we have the revenue. So what you're going to do, you have the, contract price, you know the contract price, the total price. So you are going to take the price of the total contract, price of the contract, multiply by the percentage which you have calculated from the working number two, stage number two, step number two, and you will get the revenue. Similarly, you have the profit to date. So you, so, so you have the profit, the total figure, which is was calculated from the step number one. You take the profit from the step number one, I'm just going to write that step number one or working number one and multiply it by the percentage which you have calculated from the step number two, you will get the profit to date. And when you compare the revenue with the profit, you will get the cost as a balancing figure. That's, that's a simple thing. When you compare the revenue with the profit, you will get the cost of the sale as a balancing figure. But remember, this is the working when you have the profit. and it is going to be different when you are having a loss because I told you that when you have the profit, profit is going to be recognized based on the stage of completion. That's why I took a percentage over here. But when it is a loss, you are going to take the total figure which was calculated from the step number one. So how you're going to do that? You will take the revenue. Again, revenue, how it is calculated, price, contract price, multiply by the percentage, you will get the figure. And this is the working of the loss when you are having a loss. Now, when you have the loss, you're going to write the complete figure. You're going to write the complete figure over here when you have the loss. So this is going to be the complete loss from working number one or step number one. Now, you have written the revenue, price, total 
contract price multiplied by the percentage of the completion, you get the revenue. Loss is the complete loss from the working number one. And again, cost of sales is going to be the balancing figure. The cost of sale is going to be the balancing figure. Now we have the last step within the construction contract, which is step number four or the working number four, calculating the extracts of the statement of the financial position. And I told you within the statement of financial position, either we are going to have the contract asset or we are going to have a contract liability. Now, understand this concept from your common sense that we have the cost today. This is the cost we have spent till now. And then we have the profit to date, which we have recognized within the financial statement. What we get when we add the cost to the profit, we get the revenue to date. Revenue earned. When we add the cost to the profit, we get the revenue because revenue minus cost is equal to profit. So you know the maths, you know how to arrange the equation. So when you add the cost in the profit, you get the revenue, which is the revenue earned. Now, when you compare the revenue earned with the payment from the customer, this payment from the customer is the billed amount, the amount which the customer has paid you. Now, if you have earned more revenue and you have received less from the customer, the resulting figure is going to be the contract asset because you have worked more and you got paid less, build amount is less. And if it is vice versa, you have worked less, that means you have uh, less revenue which is being earned and you have received more payment from the customer, then that means it is your contract liability. So within the statement of financial position, you're going to have either the contract assets. So when you compare the revenue earned with the build amount, so cost to date plus profit to date, you get the revenue earned. When you compare it with the build amount, you get either the contract asset or the liability. If you have earned more revenue and received less, the resulting figure is going to be the contract asset. If you have earned less and received more, then the resulting figure is going to be the contract liability. So these are the four workings that you need to remember pertaining to the construction contract. These are the four working you need to remember pertaining to the construction contract. The first working is to calculate the profit or loss. If it's a profit, it should be recorded based on the stage of completion. If it is a loss, it should be immediately recognized. The second step is to measure the stage of completion, which is the progress of the contract, because we are going to record the revenue based on the stage of completion. So we have two methods, the cost method, cost to date divided by total cost or work certified divided by total contract price, multiply by 100, you get the percentage. The third step is to calculate the extracts of the statement of profit, which is the revenue, cost and profit. So I told you the workings, Revenue, take the price, multiply by the percentage. Profit, the total profit, multiply by the percentage, and you will get the cost of the balancing figure. If you're having a loss, then this working will vary. It is going to be a complete different working. You need to put the loss immediately, the total loss from the working number one. Revenue price multiply by the percentage, and you will get the cost as a balancing figure. The fourth step is, the contract asset or the liability. If you have earned more, received less, it's a contract asset. If you have earned less and received more, it is going to be a contract liability. So these are the four workings that you must remember in order to solve the questions related to the construction contracts.